perspective. These principles are, you know, obviously repetition, that's helpful. Associating information, visualizing information, exaggerating information. So let's get to it. You gotta memorize these 12 brain rules. Got them? Maybe not yet, but you will. Um, I got them. I actually take a look at your uh, table of contents here. These are, let's say you read this book and th just for the example here, let's say you gotta memorize all 12 of these brain rules. Maybe you gotta have, do a presentation on it. Maybe you gotta memorize it for school. So, um, actually I can, I can tell you that one is exercise, two is survival. G give me any number on the list. Give me a number. Eight, Eight is stress. Give me another number. 11. 11 is gender. Give me another number. Four. Four is obviously attention. Obviously. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Throw it to me backwards. Give, it, give me a title, the brain rule. I'll tell you the Wiring. chap. Wiring is number three. Long-term memory. Long memory is number six. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I know these inside out. I'm going to teach you how I did it. It's not a mnemonic device. Okay. Now, mnemonics are great. A lot of us have encountered mnemonics. Actually, I mean, if you've been to school, you will at some point encounter a mnemonic. Um, maybe it was the order of operations mnemonic, which is, I learned it as, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, to remember the order of operations. Some people learn it as PEMDAS, but it just means do the parentheses first, and then you do your exponents, and then you do your multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Great. There's mnemonics for music. There's mnemonics to remember the planets. There's all sorts of mnemonics. Sometimes they're acronyms. Sometimes they're rhymes. Sometimes they're songs. I mean, I'm not that creative to create a song out of this. And uh, mnemonics are not easy to create like on the fly. So the system that I'm using to memorize this that I'm going to teach you is something you can actually use on the fly. And I, I personally, because I'm not in school anymore, uh, when I use this technique, I use it to remember presentations just so I kind of remember, okay, I've got to cover these nine things in this precise order, and then I'll use this technique. But if I was in school, I would use this for all sorts of, uh, let me explain how this works. So the numeric peg system, that's the name of the technique. Numeric peg system, why? Because uh, every number is gonna get pegged or associated to a visual. Number one is a pencil, okay? Why? Because it has the same shape, that's all. One and pencil, similar shape. Uh, I need you to commit this to memory, and of course you could write it down if you want. Um, you don't have to write it down, but we only have to memorize, for this technique to work really well, you only need to remember 10 numbers. That's it. And you could use it to memorize more than 10 things, actually. Uh, I'll show you how you could use it to memorize 30-some things if you needed to. So one is pencil, two is a swan. See the same shape? Two and the swan. It's not the exact same shape, but based on the short amount of time I spent looking for stock photography. <laughs> That's the closest I could find. Okay, two is a swan. Three is McDonald's, okay? You gotta turn your head sideways. But when I tell you three, you gotta be thinking of McDonald's. Notice what we're doing right now and what I mentioned earlier. Abstract information, harder for the brain to remember than visual information. So right now we're converting numbers to visuals and that's gonna help us later on. Four is a chair. Do you see the number four? If the chair was upside down, it's a four, right? So when I tell you four, you gotta be thinking in your head, chair. We'll, we will have a little quiz in a moment. Five is a hook. You see the same shape? You see the curvy part of the five here? There's the curvy part of the hook. Uh, if you were drawing it from the top, number five with the curve right there. So five is a hook. Let's do a quick little recap. Uh, those of you here, tell me what's number one? Pencil. Pencil, easy, right? What's number two? Swan. Swan. How about number three? Dog. Good, how about number four? Good, how about number five? Book. Easy, right? Okay, let's do six through 10. That's all we have to remember, six, five more numbers. Six is a cherry, okay? When I tell you six, you gotta be thinking of the cherry. When I tell you seven, you gotta be thinking of a lightning bolt. Lightning is seven. You see the number seven right there? There's another seven right there. Number eight is a racetrack. Even though it'd be weird if they made racetracks like this with intersections, <laughs> although I guess that could be a bridge or an overpass. Anyway, I, I don't watch much racing, but I think they just go like this, right? In an oval. <laughs> so left turns only. Um, number nine is a balloon. Kind of blowing in the wind. You see the number nine in a balloon. Similar shape. Not exact shape, but similar shape. Nines are balloon. And the last one you got to memorize is number 10. And that is just a place setting. A plate, a bowl, whatever you want. Some silverware on the side. But you see the one and the zero. For 10, we have maybe a spoon and maybe a plate or a bowl. 
By the way, it doesn't have to be a spoon, it could be a fork. We're gonna use this to help us visualize information, and here's how that's gonna work. And let's just do a recap, six. Everyone, tell me six. Cherry. Cherry. How about seven? Eight. Good. Nine. Balloon. Balloon. And number 10? Very good. And the success baby is back. All right, so now we gotta associate. What do we have to associate to? Anything. I mean, whatever the topics are. Uh, in this case, it's brain rules, these 12 topics. So we put them side by side. And we gotta associate exercise to a pencil, survival to a swan, and so forth. But we need to make sure these things are visualized in our head. So we'll start with one, which is exercise. I'll give you the image, for the sake of this session, because we don't have tons of, a limited amount of time, and there are other techniques I wanna go over as well. Uh, I'll give you the visuals that I came up with to memorize them. The challenge on your end is you just gotta picture what I tell you to picture. And that just takes a moment to think about what would that look like? You can close your eyes to think about it. You don't have to close your eyes. You, you can just kinda of think, okay, I see what that would look like. So for exercise, I want you to imagine that you, uh, there's a new gym that opens up in your neighborhood. You sign up for it. And when you get there, you notice this gym, something weird about this gym. Everybody is working out with pencils, okay? There's somebody doing curls with a pencil. Somebody's on the bench press with a pencil. Doesn't make any sense, I know. But remember what we said earlier. Weird. Things that are weird, exactly. Things that are weird are more memorable. So you, when you're doing this on your own, you wanna come up with something that is strange, or even if it's just a little bit of exaggeration. Easiest way to exaggerate something is make it really, really big, or really, really tiny, or make something happen that wouldn't normally happen, something that doesn't make sense. So people working out with pencils. Now these are obviously not normal size pencils. These have to be like ginormous pencils that are capable of holding weight. That's how we'll remember exercise, by associating it to a pencil. Number two is our swan. We have to remember survival. Now, for the swan, I want you to imagine a swan that is struggling for survival in that it's drowning, okay? It doesn't know how to swim, okay? And that doesn't make sense because swans should have a default setting of like knowing how to swim. Not this one, this one's drowning. Maybe you notice this swan drowning and you feel bad. You jump in the water to try to save this poor swan. This swan is struggling for survival. Now, it's not the only image we could have come up with. Like if we had 30 people in a room, all 30 people would come up with unique images, right? And like, for example, survival also reminds me of Charles Darwin. You ever hear that phrase, survival of the fittest? Um, anyway, so this only works if you make like that kind of connection. Okay, and if you could picture Charles Darwin, I don't know if you've seen a picture of him, but in his older years, he's got like this massive glorious beard. Maybe I picture Charles Darwin riding a swan around a lake. Again, doesn't make sense because swans are probably not capable of holding, you probably shouldn't sit on a swan, but just you imagine something ridiculous. So for number three, in this case, what I imagined initially was a swan struggling for survival. Three is McDonald's, the image for three. We have to remember wiring, that is chapter three. That is brain rule number three, wiring. I'm gonna picture, uh, or imagine you go to McDonald's and you get a Big Mac, and when you bite into the Big Mac, you notice there's a piece of barbed wire in the Big Mac. Imagine the pain of biting into a Big Mac with barbed wire. Imagine how disgusting that would be. Imagine how angry you would be. I'm asking you to imagine emotions as well because uh, emotions also play a part in your memory. Isn't it true that people that go through like traumatic experiences remember a lot of detail about those experiences because sometimes they'll be like, it's like time slowed down and they can remember so much detail. When you ask someone like, hey, what'd you have yesterday for lunch? They struggle to remember. Like, I, I can't quite remember. So, but when something is full of emotion, whether it's negative emotions, positive emotions, that helps. That's also why advertisers will try to make you laugh in a commercial. Or like political ads will try to get people angry and riled up or scared. Uh, three is wiring Big Mac with barbed wire. Okay, number four is attention. That's what we gotta remember. We already know the number four looks like a chair. I want you to imagine a chair that helps you pay a little more attention while you're like studying or working or reading. Uh, this chair has hands that kind of nudge you on the shoulder. When, very creepy chair, I know. Nobody would probably buy, I can't see someone buying this, but just imagine a creepy looking chair that helps nudge you on the shoulder, helps you pay attention. That's what we'll remember for number four. Okay, let's move on to five. Now five is a hook, the image for five. 
We got to remember short-term memory. Now, if you look ahead, you can see that six is long-term memory. So we need some way to distinguish between the two chapters, short versus long. Um, I don't know about you, but with hooks, hooks always remind me of pirates. So, and we, we could come up with different images. Like if you were really into fishing, hooks might remind you of fishing, but I go the pirate route. Um, now I gotta remember short-term memory. I'm gonna picture some very, very short pirates, like baby pirates, very short, but they're like teeny tiny pirates. And uh, there are a bunch of them and they're searching for their buried treasure. They buried it last night, but they can't remember where they buried it. And the reason they can't remember is because they have short-term memory problems, okay? Or they're little kids, like, do you remember what you were doing when you were like one or two? You can't quite remember that age, right? Because the part of your brain that's responsible for developing long-term memories isn't quite developed at that until like four or five years old. Okay, so short-term memory, short pi baby pirates searching for their buried treasure. Again, none of these images make sense. And of course, the challenge with this workshop is I'm asking you to remember my images. If you did these on your own, it would actually be a lot easier because they're your images. Um, but you could still remember them if I tell them to you and you actually think to yourself, what would that look like? So if I asked you number one, and think about how we backtrack. We start with a pencil, and what does that remind you of? What, chapter one is what? Exercise. Exercise, right? You remember the people working out with pencils. When I tell you number two, you're thinking of a swan, and that reminds you of? Survival, right? The swan struggling for survival and drowning. When I tell you number three, McDonald's, that reminds you of? Wiring, Wiring exactly, because you remember the Big Mac with barbed wire in it. Uh, when I tell you number four, the chair, that's reminding you of? Attention, attention right? Because you're picturing the creepy chair helping you pay attention. And when I tell you five, you're thinking hook, and that reminds you of what? Short-term memory. Short memory. So that's how we're kind of, we're kind of leaving like breadcrumbs for ourselves, or like little clues with the numbers, and then we just move on to number six, and we gotta remember long-term memory. We'll fly through the rest of these because you already get the idea. Uh, just picture a cherry with a ridiculously long stem. Okay, maybe you're eating a bag of cherries, you take one out and you're like, what in the world, why is this stem like three feet long? Well, stems are like, I don't know, this. Long-term memory, cherry with a long stem. Number seven is lightning, and we gotta remember sleep. So I'm just gonna imagine, uh, I want you to imagine for sleep, you get a new alarm clock that has a special feature. So this alarm clock, when you hit snooze, it zaps you with lightning, okay? And it's to dissuade you from hitting snooze too many times. Okay, so seven is sleep, snoozing, alarm clock, all related with sleep. And uh, we move on to eight. Eight is stress. The image for eight is a racetrack. Now remember I said they would never make racetracks with intersections like this. Imagine they did. Imagine that every time they go across the race, the intersection, there's a potential for crashing, and that's, of course, very stressful. Picture the race car drivers driving. They're stressing out. They're sweating. And to relieve their stress, they have stress balls embedded into the steering wheel. Okay, you ever have one of those squishy stress balls that helps relieve anxiety, calms you down? So those are embedded into the steering wheel. This would probably be good for people with, like, road rage issues. And we move on to nine. Okay, sensory integration is chapter nine. We gotta associate that to a balloon because nine is a balloon. So sensory integration is really just about your five senses. And your five senses all have images associated with them, right? I want you to picture these five body parts floating around in a very, very large balloon, okay? It's gotta be really big. One of those see-through balloons so you could see that there's a hand in there, there's a nose floating around, there's a tongue an ear, an eyeball. The more disturbing you make these images, the better. So I just picture something really, really strange. And that'll hopefully remind us of, oh yeah, those five body parts represent the five senses. The five senses, that's related to sensory integration. And 10, vision. Now this 10 is a place setting. It could be a plate, it could be a bowl, whatever you want. I think we should make it a bowl. And of course, the most logical thing to do here, if we gotta remember vision, is to fill the bowl with eyeballs. Not these eyeballs, picture real eyeballs. What would that look like? I think they would be a little bloody, kind of moist, um, optic nerve still attached. Maybe one of them winks at you like, and you're like put off by that. So again, the more disturbing you make this, the more graphic you make it, all of that can contribute to helping us remember. So again, with six, if we think about the cherry, you're reminded of what? Long-term memory, cherry with the long stem. When you think about number seven, you think about lightning, and that reminds you of? 
sleep, right? Getting zapped by lightning when you hit snooze. Uh, the eight racetrack reminds you of stress. stress, that stressful intersection. When you think about nine, the balloon, sensory integration. And then when you think about number 10, the play setting, vision, right? The bowl filled with eyeballs. Now, we're not done yet because we still have 11 and 12. And I mean, honestly, what if we had 24 things to remember? Let me explain how we can scale this system up. Some of you might be thinking, for 11, maybe I just use two pencils. Or 12, I'll use a pencil and a swan. No, don't do that. Here's why. Um, if you did that, it's not scalable. If you did pencil and swan for 12, what happens if you've got to remember 21 things? Well, now you just have a swan and pencil, and that could lead to crisscrossed confusion. So instead, what we need to do is create a rule. You can think of it as a rule slash theme, and that rule's got to apply to everything between 11 through 20. So the rule can actually be anything you want. Uh, the rule that I use is snow, but your rule could be different. Your rule could be rain. It doesn't have to be weather-related. It could be... Uh, Books, it could be babies, it could be celebrities, it could be cars, any kind of theme you want that has imagery related to it. So snow has a lot of imagery, right? We could have a snowball fight going on, a, a blizzard, um, a snowman. So when we get to 11, what you're going to do is you're going to use the pencil. Why? Because 11 has a pencil in it. You're also, even though we used it for one, but this pencil is going to be involved somehow with snow, and it's also going to be involved with the topic. When we get to 12, we're going to do the same thing. Swan, something snow-related, and the topic. So your visual that you come up with has to have basically three parts. The numeric peg, the number, right, swan, the theme or the rule, and then a visual-associated topic. So what are the topics? We have gender and exploration for chapters 11 and 12 in this book, Brain Rules. So for 11, we have to use these three parts. So for gender... I think of a boy and a girl, and I'm going to picture them playing in the snow, and I'm going to picture them playing in the snow with pencils like they're having a sword fight. Okay, so, and these would have to be, the exaggeration would have to be like, uh, I don't know, big sword-like pencils, okay? So, and we want to be specific when we're coming up with these images. Like when I say a boy and a girl, I would picture like brother, sister, young kids, maybe like, I don't know, seven or eight years old. And snow, how much snow is there? Well, I would picture that they're like knee deep in the snow, they're in their backyard, and they're just kind of having a sword fight with pencils. If we come up with that image and take a moment to think, it only takes a second or two, what would that look like? Later, when you've got to retrieve the memory, this is all you got when you've got to retrieve it. And when I say this is all you got, this is what you'll probably easily remember. You'll remember your theme or your rule. You'll remember 11 is a pencil, has a pencil in it. So basically, think of this mathematically. You have two elements out of the three that you got to remember, right? Two divided by three is 67% or so. 67%, you are putting the odds in your favor to retrieving that memory out of your brain. So it's like a 67% chance, give or take, I don't know, that we might remember it. Now, it's still possible I might forget, but at least I'm putting the odds in my favor. Oh, yeah, the boy and girl fighting with pencils in the snow. 12, we do the same thing. i got to use my swan. I got to use something snow related and I got to use my topic, which is exploration. So when I tell you exploration, uh, for me, I think of like space exploration. What do you guys think of? Any other things related to exploration? Maybe Dora the Explorer could be exploring like a rainforest or a mountain. mountains. Yeah, like climbing like Mount, um, Mount Everest or Kilimanjaro, one of those big mountains. Um, so we go with, basically, that's how you should be doing this. You'd be like, okay, if it was the mountains, i go the mountain route. If it was space that first hit me, I'm going to go the space route. So that's what I did. I was like, okay, I'll go the space route. Um, and space is re really relevant because recently, the, you know, we've been sending a lot of people into space recently. Um, so exploration, I need to use a swan and I need to use snow. I would picture a giant swan-like spaceship, okay, carrying like a boy astronaut or something. And I need to include snow here, so I'm just going to picture that it's snowing in space. Doesn't make any sense. This is not high quality uh, Photoshop skills, as you can see. Uh, so it's just, it's snowing in space. That doesn't make any sense. Um, there's a giant swan with an astronaut and uh, flying around exploring space. You already know how we're going to memorize now, right? If I, if I asked you right now, and take a, 
pen and paper, or I mean, those of you doing this digitally could just use maybe a digital notepad. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I want you to write the numbers down, but leave them blank. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quiz you, but I'm going to quiz you out of order. So I'm going to give you a number, and you just got to write it down and recall it as quickly as you can. And uh, those of you joining us online, just, you know, write it down on a separate sheet of paper or on some digital text editor. Let's start, and don't yell it out loud because I don't want anyone to get any clues. I want you to go through the thinking process. Uh, let's start with number four. <laughs> Write down number four if you could remember number four. Okay, and of course your clue. That if you ever get stuck with this, you just gotta backtrack and think, okay, four, what does it look like? Oh yeah, it's a chair. Write it down. Um, and I'll give you the answer because I see most of you have written it down. Four was attention. Got it, right? The chair that helps you pay attention. All right, write down uh, number seven. Number seven, the lightning bolt. Lightning, okay, got it. Seven, of course, lightning, you remember the alarm clock, and that reminds you of sleep, right? Getting struck by lightning when you hit snooze. Uh, watch this, I could go backwards, and you'll get it. I'm gonna tell you the brain rule, or the title of the chapter, and you're gonna know exactly what number, you could just write down the number. Um, sensory integration. Write down the number, or, or put it, put wherever sensory integration should go if you have them all written out like this. So sensory integration, what was going on with that? All right, and you remember the five senses, the five senses were in a balloon, right, and that's all associated with nine. All right, how about if I said a uh, short-term memory? Write down where short-term memory should go. So you just got to backtrack and think of short-term memory. What was going on with that? The imagery. Oh, yeah, there were a bunch of short pirates. And pirates reminds you of five, right? So, I mean, that's basically how we backtrack. And I'm going forwards and backwards just to show you that, I mean, we could remember things in a precise order. And like a mnemonic device, if we made a rhyme or an acronym, that would help us remember it in a precise order. But an acronym might not be able to help us remember, I don't know, number 10, Quickly, you know, like 10, you probably located it pretty quick, right? Write down what number 10 is. 10, of course, was our place setting. And that reminds you of the bowl filled with eyeballs. Oh, yeah, vision. How about number two? Write down number two. All right, we're halfway through our list. Number two. Think about the swan. And, of course, the swan reminds you of the swan drowning, struggling for survival. Survival is number two. How about uh, number 11? Remember, there's a rule involved and a pencil involved. So again, these are just little clues. Pencil, oh yeah, the rule was snow. Pencil and snow, oh yeah, the boy and girl fighting with pencils in the snow. And of course, the chapter is not boy and girl, the chapter is gender. How about uh, number three? Write down number three. I'm just keeping track on my end so we get all the numbers here. Three is McDonald's, the Big Mac with barbed wire wiring. So um, number eight, jump to number eight. Eight is our racetrack. And you're thinking about the stressful intersection, right? The stress. Okay, we only have uh, three more left. Uh, write down number 12. Write down number one. And I forgot to give you the answer for 12, but I think you kind of know if you got it or not. So 12 had a swan in it, it had snow in it. Oh yeah, the swan spaceship exploration, exploring space. Exploration was 12. Uh, and the uh, last one, I think this is the last one, number six. Write down number six, if you could remember that one. And even if you missed one here and there, it's like, okay, well, I can still study up. It's like, if I had a test tomorrow, maybe I review it before I go to bed. So number six was obviously long-term memory, right? And you see how this goes. We can basically go out of order. I don't even have to tell you a number or the brain rule. I could just say buried treasure. And that reminds you of five, and that reminds you of short-term memory, right? So that's all about association, what's going on in our brain. The more associations we make, and if you think about like the network-like um, structure of our brain. We have all these neurons, billions of neurons, and they're all 
associated or connected to other neurons with these things called synapses. And there's kind of like this kind of associative kind of uh, structure of our brain. What we're trying to do is kind of leverage um, how we learn anything else visually, right? Associating. And of course, exaggerating, because again, we know we'll remember things more likely if they're a little weird. So we could extend this further if we needed to. Like, for example, what if you had to remember 25 things or 37? Now you just got to make another rule, right? So if you got to remember, I hope you never have to remember 43 things in a precise order. But if you did, at least you have a system for 